Okay. We are live. Theoretically. Let's see if I get this all set up in a little more timely fashion tonight. So, welcome to another Wednesday night of music. Mary will be right back. We just got finished tuning. Some really fun songs this week. This was a fun, they're all fun. I mean, we're having a lot of fun doing this. If it is to be believed, this is our uh, 14th show. And uh, we cracked 100 songs. We've learned 100 songs in 14 weeks, which is pretty amazing overall. And... Uh, Know how long it takes. It always takes the, the live stream a bit to be where we can see it. Oh, I gotta go to the posts. That's what I always forget. Get live now. Oh, that's not it. That's last week's. <laughs> yeah, let's flex your notes, right? Okay, so it should be. It should be here somewhere. There, there it is. Kelly and Paula. Good evening, ladies. So, so we've had a lot of fun working on this week's set. This is the, for the guitar folks, this is like every bar chord. There are more bar chords in this set than I think in all the previous sets combined except for last week. We looked at the titles and thought, oh, this should be an easy week. And then we started on it and it's like, Every song had B flat, which is not an easy song uh, chord for ukulele, and, and F, which is not easy. And it's not that it's a hard chord, but they're all bar chords, so it's all the chord where you have to use your finger, and it's just funny. And but, B flat, which I think I have never used before this week, is in my three songs. Yes, we have bunches of E flats, and on a guitar, of course, when your lowest string tone is E, there is no easy Easy E flat. Well, let's say here. <laughs> this. You have no choice. But the upside of that is you get you get better really fast. I bet I've improved my bar chord playing more in the last couple of shows than I probably had in the last couple of years. Uh, so it's a good thing. And my B flat sound right about fifty percent of the time now. <laughs> Yeah, one of the song requests we're going to do tonight has a lot of crazy bar chords, open chords. And just uncommon. I mean, I don't think yeah. we've had any C-sharp minor songs before. Yeah, C-sharp minor has been a big hit this week. But it was a song we really liked, so it was like, yeah. well, we decided we're going to do it, so we're going to do it. I don't know if you guys can see, so uh, on a guitar, E-flat major is this. There it is. And C sharp minor is this. And uh, it was just, and it was interesting because one of the things we get to do with some of this is we get to look at the music theory of it. And we discovered that this particular song uses. Uh, one five six four one, one six, six four five one six four five. I, said, I really like the intro. Let's look at it, and it's like, so I can know what, what, uh, what's the interval. Word like? Yeah, interval. So, so I maybe use it for something later, and it's like, oh, that's a really common one. It just sounds really cool when you do it in the key of A. It's not easy to play. One five. No, one six. One four, six. Five. Uh, well, you do it with C. If you start in the key of C, it's easy. So it's C, A minor, F, G7. Well, or you do a regular G. <laughs> so, and Adela is on. Hello, oh, Adela. So, but yeah, so it's been a, I certainly, 
given that I'm probably getting a, when I first started playing guitar, people always say, well, how did you get started? How did you get to playing so quickly? Well, I practiced two hours a day. I took my guitar to work, I played an hour at lunch, and then when I came home from work, I played another hour every day for one year. And that gets you through the basic hurdles of guitar playing. Gets your fingers toughened up. And, uh, and so even with the band and everything, and us practicing a couple of hours every other week, on average, I probably don't get anywhere near an hour a day practice. And there's plenty of times when the only practice I've been doing is my, is my band practice. So this has all been work on new songs practice, which is a lot of fun. Plus, we're kind of rediscovering a lot of music that we knew, and it's like, oh, we could do some of these songs. Yeah, people will, will mention a song that's like, never heard of it, so they look for a YouTube video, it's like, oh, that song. Oh, that song. <laughs> some of them are just that you don't know the title, you know, you know the words, and I'm usually really great with that kind of stuff, but. But also part of it is, it, you know, when you're talking about songs that are 50 years old, you've just forgotten, because yeah. you really didn't know the name more. Yeah, one of the Everly brothers, Phil Everly, passed away this past week, so we might have to take up another, uh, another, one, of their songs. another one of their songs. I think it maybe Wake Up Little Susie. That'd be a... But yeah, so... And it's interesting, when you start plumbing the depths of all this crazy music, uh, the Hollies has been on my feet all week, and the Hollies getting together with Alan Bradley, one of the Hollies founding members uh, in 2012, Jumped on, jumped in with uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash because, of course, Graham Nash and, and was in the Hollies, and and they did Bus Stop Live, and it was uh, it's quite amazing. And there's a little, uh, there's a, I think it's a two or three part YouTube like a little documentary about the Hollies and how they came to be and why they fell apart. Typical story of bands. They were like, just if you've never seen the movie That Thing You Do, that clearly concisely summarizes up what bands are like. That movie is absolutely spot on about how it works in a band. Or how it doesn't work. Or how it doesn't work. Um, so it's seven. You, it's seven. All right, so uh, welcome to the show. Pamela, hey, hey. And Ricky Becker, hey guys. Welcome to the show. We've got some great music for you tonight. We are drinking Cider Boy's Blackberry Wild, which was a seasonal, and I think we bought four or six six packs of it because it's blackberry and cider, and it's really good. All right, so we're gonna have some fun. Thank you guys for joining us. Let's play some music. One, two, three, four.
was, of course, End of the Line by the Traveling Wilburys, 1989, sort of like the greatest supergroup that essentially sort of never was. Uh, Bob Dylan, Tom Petty, Jeff Lynne from ELO, uh, George Harrison, and Roy Orbison. And between the time that they recorded the album and released the video for the song in 1989, Roy Orbison passed away. So they never really they never did anything after that. And uh, now it's astonishing. Only Bob Dylan and Jeff Lynne from that group are still alive. But they recorded some great tunes. It's a fun song. And now, something slightly more modern. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought for sure it was the same year as the previous song, but I guess... No, no. Okay. It's the same year as the last song. Oh, okay. Yeah, that the Traveling Wilburys is 1989, just kind of squeaking in at the end of the 80s, when they still made videos that <laughs> looked like videos. Well, this was a music video. I, I heard it on MTV the first time I heard it. But it was a performance video, wasn't it? No. <laughs> I was done watching MTV by then. They were then. just walking around. They didn't do anything really yeah. artsy. I mean, they were amazing. Yeah. Now here's a little something from Mary's favorite band. One, two, three, four. Show me where the 
was Shine by the band Collective Soul, written by their lead singer and essentially kind of the heart of the band, uh, Ed Rowland, 1994. We're in, we're within 20 years. <laughs> uh, no, within 30 years. 30 years, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So much for that plan. <laughs> A great song, though. Great. It's from their very first album, uh, Hints, Allegations, and Things yeah, Left Unsaid. Dead. Great album. Yeah. We saw them live twice. They were really, really good. And Mary had wanted to do a Collective Soul song, so we might have another Collective Soul song. They had a lot of great music, but... Their, their style was that. They're a rock band, so maybe an acoustic is a little tricky. But it was funny because after I did some looking at this song, a video floated across my YouTube feed of Ed Rowland on, uh, in New York basically playing this song. Or was he playing... Uh, he was playing World That I Know. World That I Know, just on an acoustic guitar, and it was really good, so it's doable. Good songs should be playable that way. <clears throat> to where the song I'm is. I played my chord that wasn't uh, for me to count right. Yes, that. So we'll just try that one more time. One, two, three, four.
was uh, clearly Take Me Home, Country Roads. Um, I believe the actual tighter title of the song is Country Roads, Come and Take Me Home, but or the other way around. I never I remember. Know. But uh, by John Denver, and people are still. I saw. I must have seen that song in my YouTube feed being done by people in isolation like us a lot. It's a great song, and uh, we could all hope we sound one tenth as good. John Denver had a, just an astonishing voice beyond his great songwriting. And he had an astonishing range. We had to drop it because it was just too high. Too high. We do it in his, in his original key at the uh, at the hoop because you can hide because some people can hit that. Uh, to the place that well, I know. One, one, of, one of us had to be able to sing the word belong. I kind of screeched on it, but at least I was getting it. <sighs> so. <laughs> Alright. There's a little in the mix of Irish and seafaring. It's just a little something that we do in Fin Dan. One, two, three, four. is called Yarmouth Town. It is a traditional piece. Yarmouth Town, it's uh, the town of Great Yarmouth. It's a real place. And uh, most recently, the band Great Big Sea brought this song into prominence, I believe, on their album Sea of No Cares. Uh, but a uh, great fun tune. And there's that break in the middle is a, uh, a fiddle, a chord. they use an accordion in the art. Accordion player in Pintan, Mark Reineman, figured out it's a tune called Old Dan Tucker. So Mary put it together on the, uh, that's probably my mom calling. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we'll call her later. All right, so we're going to play uh, the request. 
This was one of those songs that sounded so easy. Uh, we learned it, and it's a great song, and we uh, we had a lot of fun learning it. But uh, it was it was pretty challenging. Okay. request for our friend Melanie. So we should have known it wasn't going to be an easy song. We didn't know too much about this song, so we had to dig in. That song is from 1966 from a band called The Circle. C-Y-R-K-L-E. <laughs> it's recorded by someone called Kirkle. Yeah, she, the circle? Yeah, yeah. That famous Kirkle band. <laughs> um, but Paul Simon and Bruce Woodley wrote this song. So you can always be clued into anything Paul Simon writes is going to be hard to play. Yeah, the key of A is not an easy key, and then it steps up a half step. Not yeah. A step, to the key of B flat, which nobody writes. Yeah, B flat, D minor, E flat natural. So B flat natural, D minor, E flat natural, with some Fs, G minors, C minors. Oh my gosh. But fun song to play. I don't think we quite got the 1966 poppy monkey style sound with it, but. Great tune. Thanks for the request. And as always, we will try and learn requests. I mean, we're literally learning these songs in six days. I mean, basically, we've now got to the point where we've got our, we'll finish, we'll put together next week's set list tonight and start practicing it tomorrow because we just can't afford to not practice on Thursday and be fiddling around with the sets too much. But please uh, feel free in the comments to this to drop some song suggestions. We certainly, the world of music is huge and wide, and we're rediscovering songs. So if there's uh, something... Or if there's an artist you like, and you're 
like and you don't really care, just say the artist name and we'll pick their easiest. Yeah, name. throw yeah, throw an artist <laughs> to, to us. Um, but uh, we're always looking for new stuff, and while we do still have a lot of songs, we are about halfway through our giant master list, or a little more than halfway through. Um, so assuming we do this for all of July and probably all of August, we might need a few tunes. Plus, we like song suggestions. If you know, we'll we'll do our best. So here's our last song for tonight. As always, thank you guys tons for being us. We really had a lot of fun with this song, and we'll talk about it after we're after. Uh, but this has now become one of my new favorite songs. Great chord progression. Yeah. One, two, three.
was Wonderwall by Oasis from 1995. I don't know why this song gets so much hate. Uh, we started playing it. The chord progression is just cool. E minor 7, G super 7, D sus 4, A7 sus 4. Really sweet, really on, nice lyric. On the ukulele, one finger got removed. She just moves the other fingers around it. That's yeah, and on, the, and on the guitar, these are some of the same chords you would find in, in Wish You Were Here, where... Super fun song to play. Uh, I, I, I've subscribed to a handful of guitar channels, and the guitar players are like, oh my god, someone asked me to play Wonderwall. I'm like, I don't get it. A great tune. So, we thought we'd end with something a little different. We've got some couple of tunes lined up for next week. Thank you all for hanging out with us tonight. And if you've got song suggestions or artist suggestions, or even better, so we can go do a little hunting. But uh, thank you as always. And we hope that you are safe and well. And we'll be back next Wednesday night with some more music. Hope you all have a, a nice Wednesday evening. Good night, everyone. Take care. I really will change these strings on my guitar this week. <laughs>